This week, Florida's former Republican governor, Charlie Crist, won a primary election so that he can run for governor again, but this time as a Democrat. One of his chief talking points, taking the wind out of the sails of incumbent Republican Governor Ron DeSantis ahead of a potential 2024 presidential bid. It is the Democrats' last chance to stop him, and it's going to be a lot cheaper to do it in Florida than it would be to do it in 50 states. If you want to help Joe Biden get a second term, we need to shut Ron DeSantis down in Florida now. Florida Congressman and Democratic candidate for Governor Charlie Chris joins us now. Hi, Congressman. So your opponent has a record war okay. chest for a governor. Uh, your campaign donations are far short of what he has. As one fundraiser told CNN, quote, Charlie has a better chance of getting a large check from the tooth fairy under his pillow than he does from national donors, <laughs> making the point <laughs> that Florida is not viewed by Democrats as a winnable state. What are you going to do to change that in these next 11 weeks until the general? Well, it's eminently winnable. There's no question about that, Pamela. When you look at Florida today, it's about a third registered Republican, about a third registered Democratic, and about a third registered Independent. That's really the definition uh, of a swing state. So I think our chances are very good. Um, I've polled ahead of him at some points in this race, behind a little bit sometimes in this race. Um, but I know I'm on the right side of history on the issues that matter to Floridians, like a woman's right to choose. I am pro-choice. He is not. Uh, he signed a barbaric law, frankly. Uh, it's a 15-week law, and it doesn't even give exceptions for rape or incest. It's just unconscionable. Um, you know, plus, Florida's not affordable anymore. I mean, if you're a millionaire or a billionaire in Florida, you're probably doing fine, but most of us are not. And so buying a house is challenging, to say the least. Renting an apartment is difficult. I mean, you know, I, as a member of Congress, rented an apartment in Washington, rented an apartment in St. Pete. Guess which, which one was more expensive? The one in Florida. That's what DeSantis has done. He has taken his eye off the ball of Florida, the issues that concern them, you know, the inflation that we're suffering from, the economy that we're suffering from. Middle income Floridians and, are getting and squeezed let me just, and let me crushed. Just jump in there and the governor really is more quickly. focused on the White House. If you would, um, if you would, let me just jump in because you had painted the picture starting early on in the answer to my question that Florida is a swing state. But the bottom line is that more there are more registered Republicans than Democrats now in Florida. I mean, does that concern you? Well, what concerns me is the fact that there are a lot of registered Democrats and a lot of registered independents that outnumber that. Plus, let's not forget. There are some moderate Republicans that still live in Florida uh, that I think we have a great chance to get their vote. You know, Republican women, uh, by and large, don't like, you know, some white guy in the governor's mansion in Tallahassee telling them they don't have the right to choose and make their own decisions about their body. Their and reproductive we're going to talk rights. about that, That's and wrong. I'm going to be asking yeah, you African about Amer that later in the interview, and, I'm going to, and I will be asking you about that. And just for numbers, uh, Republicans outnumber Democrats by approximately 200,000, which is a, a reversal from the last decade, just to put numbers to that. Um, and, and I want to get to the, the more specific issues that I know you want to talk about, but first I want to ask you about this. Um, even though some vulnerable Democrats are reportedly shying away from having President Biden's help on the campaign trail, you have said you would absolutely <laughs> want him to join you. What is your message to fellow Democrats mm -hmm. who are distancing themselves from him right now? Well, well, you know, I can only speak for myself. I support the president. I think he's doing a great job. Uh, I really appreciated what he did for college students uh, by getting uh, the ability to forgive some of the loans that they've been, you know, burdened with um, by doing what's right. Uh, when it comes to Roe versus Wade and signing an executive order, which I've already reported I will do, I'll sign an executive order on the first day of the Christ administration to protect a woman's right to choose, because it's the right thing to do. I was raised with three sisters. I'm an only son. And, and I understood from the get-go uh, that it's important mm -hmm. to treat others well, to be decent to people, and mm -hmm. to respect their wishes. Do you still identify as pro-life? I'm pro-choice. I'm pro-choice, and that's why I've got a 100% rating by Planned Parenthood, by NARAL. I mean, Pamela, it's this stark. When I was a Republican governor, I vetoed an anti-abortion bill, and, and I think that's the right thing to do because mm -hmm. I do respect a woman's right to choose. And the governor that we have doesn't, 
as I said, the law he signed doesn't even have exceptions for rape or incest. I mean, that's barbaric. Let me just ask you about your position, though, because in the past you have said you were pro-life. So has your views on this <coughs> changed over time? Ha have your, has your perspective evolved into to how you look at it now? No, they've only gotten stronger, you know, and that's why, as I said, as a Republican governor of Florida, I vetoed an anti-abortion bill. That bill was calling uh, for an ultrasound to be taken before a woman mm -hmm. could make that decision and would have to pay for it at the same time. I thought it was mean-spirited. I thought it was inappropriate. I thought it was wrong. As a Republican governor, I've already done that. I'll do it as a Democratic governor, and I look I forward understand, to it. In the past, you have said that you were pro-life. Now you're saying you're pro-choice. You said that your view has only gotten stronger. So just help us kind of un square that, if you would. Saying in the past you were pro-life, sure. now saying well, your views yeah. on pro have gotten stronger to be pro-choice. Deeds are the most important part of this discussion. So as a young state senator, uh, I voted against uh, an anti-abortion bill in the health care committee, killed the building committee on a 3-3 tie, never went to the Senate floor. As I've already told you a couple times, as a Republican governor, I vetoed an anti-abortion bill. I mean, my record's crystal clear. And that's why Planned Parenthood and NARAL uh, have endorsed me uh, and supported me, giving me a 100% rating on the issue of choice and reproductive rights and respecting those reproductive rights for women. Nobody in this race, because it's only me and Ron DeSantis now, has a better record on protecting women and standing up for them and fighting for their choice and making their own decisions for themselves. Uh, they're not going to find a better defender than Charlie Crist of their right to choose. Let me ask you about um, going back to, to President Biden. Uh, this week at a DNC fundraiser, the president criticized extreme MAGA philosophy mm -hmm. and said it's almost like semi-fascism. There has been a lot of pushback to this. GOP Governor Chris Sununu talked about it today. Let's listen. Horribly insulting. Uh, he, I mean, the fact that the president would go out and just insult half of America, because uh, effectively half of America has votes Republican, half of America ultimately votes Democrat. You know, it, it swings a little bit one way or the other. But effectively call half of America semi-fascist um, because he's trying to stir up controversy. Um, he's trying to stir up this anti-Republican sentiment right before the election. Um, it's just, it's horribly inappropriate. It's insulting and, and people should be insulted by it and he should apologize. People like Hochul and Chris are representative of this leftist mindset that they do believe the conservative half of the country are effectively second-class citizens. Your opponent, DeSantis, taking the chance there to criticize you as well as we heard. Uh, some are saying this is as bad as when Hillary Clinton termed Trump supporters deplorable, deplorables. Do you think that productive message from the president of the United States against millions of Americans? I think what's important is to state the facts as they are. I'm running against Ron DeSantis. He's my only opponent. And so I want to talk about what he's done to my state. He recently fired a state attorney in the Tampa Bay area, well respected, because he expressed an opinion about, you know, what he would do in, in terms of exercising his uh, prosecutorial discretion. He also, Governor DeSantis, teed off on Walt Disney World. Why? Because they decided to express their right to free speech about a piece of legislation the governor was considering signing. And as a result, because they exercise their right to free speech, he tees off on them. Now, I don't know what term you want to apply to that. I, I think, you know, he's an autocrat who clearly wants to tell everybody what to do, including women, taking away African-American congr congressional districts in my state, two of them, um, not making it harder to vote. He's anti-democratic. I'll put that label on him. I'm a Democrat right. running to fight for and protect democracy. Everybody's right and, to vote. And he's and on I the other understand. side of it, making it hard to mail in ballots. I understand, and you've taken that position repeatedly against your opponent, Ron DeSantis, but when it comes to President Biden, you have said you want him to come campaign with you in Florida. So it does matter uh, what the president says and how you view it. So again, let me just ask you, um, what do you think about the president calling millions of Americans semi-fascist? Listen, he's got to express and be honest about what he feels in his heart and his soul, and I think that's probably exactly what he did. Now, to your question, do I want him to come campaign for me? Absolutely. I mean, what he's done, I'm wearing the American and Ukrainian flag. How he's handled that situation is almost miraculous. You know, keeping the EU together, expanding NATO, 
uh, doing what's right to make sure that these people who are literally fighting and losing their lives to fight and defend democracy against a giant opponent, Russia, uh, it's remarkable what the president has done. And probably because it's all based on relationships that he has had over the years. He's trusted. He's a decent guy. He works hard. He tells the truth. And I think that's exactly what he's done.